Wow, well, that's loud. All right, it's now being recorded. In which case, we will start again. Um, and I think you can see my screen now. Let me throw the link into chat. That's right. I'm not supposed. To, I can't record it locally in a web a web client. I have to use the local client, which I can't share my screen with. Um, that's not a concern, anyone. Uh, just as we get started, if you could please add your name to the, um, the attendees. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the Qvert Community Meeting. It is the 18th of September. We are recording now. Um, I would like to, uh, yeah, welcome you all here. I, I hope everything has been uh, wonderful um, in my absence. Like I said, I'm still catching up on things. I would like to thank Daniel, Larry, and Mark for taking care of the community meeting while I've been uh, out on absence. Um, and yeah, if anyone feels the urge or the itch to uh, help host slash moderate this meeting, by all means, um, don't expect me to do it. I'd love some help. Um, just reach out. Anytime, just let me know. Uh, let's have a quick look at our schedule. 1.4. I think from memory, it's like the 11th of November or something. I thought it was 22. Feature freeze, 22nd of October, and a GA of 12th of November. Um, and yeah, that is coinciding with KubeCon North America 2024. Speaking of KubeCon, uh, I won't jump to the upcoming CFP check-in because I've actually got it here. Um, I got an email today saying, or well, at some point, I think today, saying that the KubeCon Cloud Native Con EU 2025 CFP is now open. Uh, so that link will take you there. It is running from April 1st to the 4th in London, England. Um, obviously, next year. Um, yeah, so get those um, uh, proposals in now. Uh, and if you need any help um, spitballing ideas or if you'd like a review, please reach out. Um, all right, we've got a couple of things happening in chat. So Lubo says that the beta is running late. What was my issue with the release build? Uh, Lubo, is that likely to push out GA date. Hey, um, not really. I think I saw a fix already. So it should just delay the beta in a couple of days and then we, we are good to continue. Awesome. Thanks for that. See, Harsha does not have uh, edit access. Um, if you become a member of the Cuba Dev Google Groups, and the link is at the very top of this um, meeting agenda, um, click on that link and become a member, then you will have added access to this document by default and all of the um, Cuba owned documents. Um, but I believe LHA is putting that in there. Um, and yeah, uh, there was a um, Daniel kindly shared a Mastodon 2. Um, from FOSDEM, they've confirmed their dates as the 1st and 2nd of February 2025. Um, it's like super hot off the press. Um, Alice, you have uh, the next thing on the open floor.
seems it's not just me who's having audio problems today, which um, is obviously both problematic, but makes me feel slightly better. Well, Alice has a quick look at their audio. Uh, I saw a question about the FOSTEM uh, CFP is not yet open. Uh, the website hasn't been updated. Um, these are just uh, save the dates. Um, but I've been in contact with the um, the dev, uh, wait, the Vert and Cloud Infra Dev Room organizers. Um, and so when they have a CFP open, I will share it. Here. You're very welcome. Okay, let me chase back. Which I can see that you're back and you're muted. Yeah, it doesn't seem it works. Hey, there we go. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay, yeah. Um, so actually the question is actually what the same I posted in the chat. So I'm sorry, in the, in the agenda. We would like to have more reviewers. Um, if anybody has an idea of how to encourage people, it would be, it would be great if you could share it. Or does any of the people here that doesn't to review usually would feel more comfortable to do reviews or if there is something that scares you or uh, I don't know, it will be good to know. Anyway, if you want to share, it's okay otherwise. You can always change his life for many list. So I'm going to guess no one wants to <laughs> talk about this stuff. Just leaving a lot of space for other people to, to fail, but that's in the way. Flag does say that people need to realize that their reviews are dependent on them reviewing other people's code too. Um, yeah, thanks for bringing this up, Alicia. We've been struggling with this inside our team because we often get reports of large latency between when a PR is uh submitted and when we actually get a review so there is a um systemic endemic i don't know right the, the the word i'm looking for but yeah we have a problem that we should address somehow at a cultural level and um, i'm not quite sure how to do that though but i i do agree that it's uh it's problematic in general yeah i think often people things that they need to be super expert in uh, QR codes. I mean, sometimes the case, but there has been at least a lot of PR that have been dealing with the refactoring and uh, having a couple of more eyes on those uh, would be good, actually. That's a very good observation. Maybe, I mean, you could be right. It could just be a confidence issue if people don't feel like they're the authority on something, so they kind of shy away from it. But I think what Andrew said is also important. It is a give and take. If you want a code review, <laughs> you know, trade. I was just reading what Vladik said in chat. I, but for me, the um, the big issue, uh, I'm the least experienced person in the room, um, is just time. It's a it's a tremendous amount of time providing reviews 
And I think it's one of the things that often get fallen off the wayside when when there's a lot of things that need to be done, um, which is every day of the week, unfortunately. Um, so I think, I mean, more reviewers is one thing. And um, one thing I can do is put out a call to the, to the list. Um, it might be worthwhile having, like, does it make sense to help, like, with a... Um, a really simple mentorship program to help people that don't feel comfortable to get some pointers on on how to review. Is there uh, any documents uh, we can refer to to aid in this? Um, okay. Perhaps. A language learning. Um, I would just stress to everybody, every PR needs at least two reviews. So there's always going to be somebody else uh, as your wingman uh, helping either do an LGTM or approve. So it's not solely on just you, there's more eyes. So uh, dive in there, you know, and, and as Vladek also said in chat, it could just be stylistic comments like, hey, why'd you do it like this? As opposed to, you know, a deep thoughtful you know, uh, analysis of the logic itself. Yeah, so thank you, Adi, for uh, writing this question in the chat. I think that, um, I mean, I completely agree with Vladik's and Jet's answers. Um, even a first uh, glance on a PR, asking a few questions, um, and, you know, asking for clarifications, coding styles, things like that, um, remove at least some of the burden from the reviewers that will come afterwards. So, uh, yeah, if, even if you're a newbie and you're not sure, um, just ask questions, give your two cents. That's always um, beneficial. And, and it's even beneficial for you personally, because then uh, when you get the answers, you will get more familiar with the code base and that might give you more confidence for the next reviews. Yeah, and also if um, the PR is not clear to you what he's doing, that's already a good feedback for the author. So. By the way, another thought that I have is that maybe um, approvers or uh, people with more experience need to be uh, need to delegate um, reviewers more often. So, for example, if I know that somebody else is familiar with um, a certain area of the code, I can ping him and say, "Hey, would you mind having a look?" And and even if I, you know, I have the experience and I know this code this code area as well. Um, to do so, to delegate it just so people, it's just so other people, you know, would get involved. And sometimes that's harder to do, you know, because uh, you, you get into it and, and you just, uh, you want to, you, know, you want to give your two cents and you, you want to um, just have a look and give your advice. But um, I think that approvers should, you know, hold themselves back and, and try to delegate to others. But that would be beneficial for everyone. I So um, I just already posted that question into the chat, but maybe one of the more experienced reviewers or even approvers could probably do a session. Um, I mean, out of this is out of scope for the community meeting, obviously, because that would take too long, I figure. But like something like a, a, like a demo um, of uh, how to do code requests, uh, code uh, code reviews. Um, so um, maybe something like with with a bit of guidance. I, I'm not sure if that makes sense because I think like in every project I would figure that the code review styles are always a bit different. But general advice uh, and maybe my, or general advice maybe uh, maybe good to have for people that are new any uh, to to code reviews in any way. But also like um, 
um, like a, a, a bit of a show around about what the project comprises about. It may, might be even be really interesting for people who are new to the project. And maybe, uh, maybe even I learned something new. It could be, right? So that would be great. I, I would at least appreciate that. I think that would, that would help break the barrier. Um, so I think like we can't just ask for more reviewers um in my opinion at least i think that we can't only can't just ask for no, for more reviewers we also need to offer the advice that new reviewers might want that's i'm not sure um maybe maybe this is this is just a mumbling but yeah that's my opinion okay i'm i'm, I'm done Just a random thought as well, outside of asking for new reviewers, um, it would be good if we could start targeting the review bandwidth that we do have at the most kind of um, the highest priority PRs or the most impactful stuff somehow. Um, I'm not sure if we could use labels for that, but um, yeah, just kind of focusing the, the bandwidth that folks do have at the moment on, on a few things. Um, could also alleviate some pressure. Um, and you could also use that same mechanism to then kind of direct um, newer folk to um, easier kind of things, first time reviews and stuff like that. But um, yeah, if you just click through to the, the PR backlog that we have at the moment, it, it can be kind of overwhelming, even um, if you're not not brand new to the, to the actual project. Um, so just providing some guidance there on, you know, what needs to be looked at or what's easy to start with or something would be good. Thanks, Lee. I'm not quite sure how we would pull that off. If, if somebody is self um, evaluating how important their PR is, it, I mean, that's one thing, but if, if we're going to do some sort of like committee or review process to determine what the most important things are, that takes bandwidth too. Why not just do a review? Uh, one hint, by the way, is that we have the SIG code quality, which is a fantastic place to start if you are, are looking to for a first time review, because those PRs are always simple, literally by nature. And so it's a it's a great place where you can get your uh, get a little experience. Daniel, you've got your hand raised. Yeah, yeah so, the other, uh, sorry. Uh, Alicia, OK, so you, you go first. No, I just wanted to say if we do a mentorship uh, program, as Andrew suggested, um, I mean, more experienced uh, people like approvers who actually suggest certain certain PR. Daniel, you're muted. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me uh, to chime in what was asked about like the labels that we might use to prioritize PRs. Um, I've been looking into what Kubernetes does and to me it seems like they have currently five uh, different labels um, uh, of which we ourselves only use two. Um, and but but the interesting thing that stuck out to me was um, that they seem to have like some automation that enforces or um, like uh, labels PRs that don't have uh, a priority label attached um, with needs priority. And I think maybe that's like, so it could be that, that we might, might uh, do a triage in the community meeting, for example, and then ask people what actually um, how the priority should look if uh, there is no priority attached, or maybe even review that. Um, that I that was uh, my first thought, um, and um, yeah, I forgot to say. Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know how to raise my hand in Zoom, so uh, I'm just going to jump in. I apologize, Vladek. Uh, that's a good suggestion, Daniel. The, the concern I have is that if we wait to triage for a week, uh, I, I would still look at an unprioritized issue in the interim because otherwise we were added this weird like artificial time lag for process reasons. Um, 
So I would treat an unprioritized issue as the way we currently do. So if if I, I don't know how, in the end how helpful it is, but I'm I'm game. I have no objection if we want if we all want to try that. I'm just thinking about like sorry, Vladik. Yeah, you you go first. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. <laughs> I can type. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I was just wanting to respond to Stu. So um, I just think that um, like the 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 pure um, uh, presence of a needs um, needs a priority label on a on a PR or on an issue would would uh, stick out as being something that is not yet triaged. So we could probably like leverage that on uh, on our triage sessions probably so that this might this might look like it's an unready one right so we haven't gone over it and we might need more information or whatever but surely it might need a priority um so maybe that would also be something that we could then uh, yeah do like like leverage it for for the triage but yeah you're right um it should be probably done more often um, but everyone would be free to look at for for PRs and issues with needs uh, priority label, right? Yeah. So so Vladik, sorry. <laughs> I'll just repeat what I wrote. Uh, I mean, to me, um, these priorities they need to be correlated to some kind of goals that we <clears throat> that we have as a project, and we don't have that. I mean, we never published any kind of uh, like where do we go and uh, what's what's the roadmap or anything like this. So, I think um, I mean to me, each SIG should know um, what are the priorities or or, or something. Um, so I, I would say I would put it on every SIG uh, to to kind of prioritize that if this. If certain PRs fall into um, into SIG prior, like a, a, into into certain SIG, um, the SIG itself can can do triages and then add uh, um, what's really important. Yeah, and to share my two cents here, uh, sometimes you know by looking at a PR description. Uh, you can understand what it aims to do, and then prioritizing it. Um, you know, some somebody doesn't necessarily have to actually look at the code or implementation. So, uh, I mean, triaging it in terms of priority uh, is is much easier than actually reviewing it and diving into all of the technical details. So, I think it makes sense, and I think we should, you know, do this on a regular basis and not necessarily wait for the community calls. I see there are many topics uh, after that. Maybe we should uh, try to cover them. Yeah, yeah, a few, few things to move on to, but um, yeah, really interesting discussion. I, I wanted just to throw another thing into the mix because I've read a lot of emails recently. Um, uh, Lee, your suggestion of a 1.5 unconference. I do wonder whether or not it makes sense for part of that to cover SIGs agreeing on what would likely be in a roadmap and whether this prioritization can then, what if that can help drive prioritization throughout the development process? Yeah, definitely. At, at a feature level, that would help. Um, and it, yeah, you could then apply that to certain PRs as they come through and prioritize them. Um, yeah, it, it would be good to see SIGs prioritize the other end of the scale as well. PRs that haven't been touched for like 30 days and stuff and somehow attach some kind of priority for folks to review things that are stale um, as well. But yeah, it, the, the prioritization for features and stuff would be great, yeah. Good stuff. Um, yeah, I have, I have some emails to respond to, and that's definitely one of them. Um, all right, so we are going to move on. And if we've got some time and inclination, we can return to that subject. Um, Harshit, uh, you have a POC which you want to talk about. Uh, yes. Hey, folks. Um, so 
this is about the an uh, design proposal pr uh, which i submitted a few months back i'm trying to share or you can share the the page so the main idea is that uh, since libvirt allows multiple hypervise uh, multiple virtualization stacks uh, as drivers uh, kubevirt should be able to support them and not just kemu kvm so the main uh, change which i introduced was to add a uh, a field in the api called hypervisor and uh, an interface named hypervisor which contains uh, specific which contains the 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 functions that kubevirt calls uh, to get you know specific values for different um, um, virtualization stacks so if you can go to um, hypervisor which is uh, just a sec under package hypervisor yeah so there are some this is an abstract interface which uh, exposes uh, the um, functions that would have different implementations for kemo and kvm and so i have uh, sorry for kemo and cloud hypervisor and so i have uh, filtered down all the functionality that is different for the two virtualization stacks um and uh, th that's that's all the difference there is to handling different virtualization stacks at least as far as creating a simple virtual machine instance and uh, um some other performance related uh, features are concerned um in the in the uh, design proposal uh, pr i received feedback about creating uh, like a plugin for different hypervisors and i was not sure whether so much of differentiation was needed to support different hypervisors and i'm trying to see if uh, this is a good middle ground have you thought about, I'm um, sorry for uh, jumping in. Uh, and thank you very much for taking the time and uh, investing into this. It's um, it's very interesting. <clears throat> the, um, my question is, have you ever thought about uh, uh, how are we going to differentiate between different uh, features that Qbert supports in general and uh, different hypervisors, you know, supporting or not supporting those? Yeah, um, that's, that's right. Uh, can it be part of the, the CRD of KubeWord? I, I'm, I'm rather new to the KubeWord uh, space, so I would rely on your suggestions. I'm not entirely sure <laughs> uh, how can... Yeah, I, I mean, the, there should be some kind of a clear boundary between uh, uh, all of these features. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to how to do this. I mean, one thought was to expose some kind of capabilities hmm. and then match those capabilities to to features. Um, I'm not sure if this is a good idea. That's one thing. And then uh, besides that, um, <clears throat> it, do you see a scenario where um, different hypervisors, I mean, different having uh, different word launchers running on the same environment. I mean, basically it's, it comes down to the to launcher, right? Yeah, for, for the most part, yeah. Uh, different word launchers running on the same cluster, you mean? Or yes. the same, uh, yeah, the same cluster. Yeah, that is something we discussed and uh, I think it's something we can, it's worth supporting. So you could have uh, a cluster with different, uh, uh, you know, operating systems offering different virtualization stacks and you could have a unified management of all of those uh, of virtual machines on these uh, diverse set of machines with the same Qbert instance. Mm. Okay, I, I think this is something that we need to take to the design proposal. Are you going to update uh, the proposal again? Yes, yes. I was working on this POC and uh, I will update it with what I found here. Uh, would it be also possible to open this PR against Qbert? Uh, yeah. I mean, you can set it in draft, but at least we can 
it's easier to get review. Um, yeah. Super. Yes, definitely. Yeah. If I may chime in on that. So um, I, I think um, it's interesting, but the thing would be um, we definitely would need to have testing infrastructure for that. Who would sponsor that? OK. I, I don't have a good answer for that right now, but uh, thanks for raising that. So uh, I think. Um, so I work for uh, for Microsoft, and I think we are the only people who are uh, going to use Cloud Hypervisor with QWord, at least as far as I know. Um, yeah. And in terms of support, I mean, none of us is really an expert in the in Cloud Hypervisor. And uh, will you be the only one who is contributing to this uh, effort, or? Uh, we we would have more more people. Yeah, right now it's just me. But as it is moves to upstream, I'm sure I'll get some more support from my side. And then there are also folks who work on Cloud Hypervisor and LibWord in uh, in in my team. Okay, I think the first step is to is to actually start to revive the. Uh, the proposal again and uh, flesh out all the all the issues and uh, try to talk about them okay um also lubo you you had a different proposal uh how to how to tackle this right um yeah let's see what what the ability this proposal is about and i was actually now thinking that we might uh have like dedicated meetings about this to to uh yeah, we can speak about you know <clears throat> what's the what's the next steps and uh, if we decide to do do this, of course. Sure, that'd be very helpful. Um, just one thing to point out: uh, there was a, um, I mean, this is, issue was raised uh, multiple times already. Um, there is a discussion here, basically, in the chat. Um, um, about this, this specific issue. There's a long and interesting conversation over there. Uh, so I think it would be valuable to look at. And uh, as David also uh, outlines there, uh, he says that uh, maybe the first thing that we need to think about is how the interface would look like. So he mentions that he pictures something uh, similar to a CRI for Kubernetes. So um, something similar for, uh, you know, interface to, uh, to integrate with multiple hypervisors. So uh, yeah, I think that's a good point. And by the way, I think that the proposal there uh, was from a different company. So I mean, I think that shows that there's a need for that from multiple uh, you know, parties. So uh, yeah, I, I think that we're all for it. We just have to uh, carefully carve out the, the path for it. Yeah, I would also like to raise another point. So since we talk about reviews previously, um, since this is going to be a big change, um, if somebody from Intel could actually help us with review, we will help you to get part of the community, to get the code and um, yeah. For sure, it will also speed up the the um, integration, possible integration of cloud hypervisor. Next topic. So yep, I'm just navigating my interfaces. Um, yeah, Harshit, thank you very much for um, for reviving that topic. Um, and yeah, again, if anyone, um, if I've made any mistakes or I've missed any points um, in my 
note taking, please uh, correct or add. Um, we've got a couple of things from Andre. Looks like they may have been yeah. covered already by Alice. It's me. <laughs> I, I'm Andre. Yep, yeah, welcome back. Um, um, the the goal here is to understand what was released on version one point oh, uh, because we was very interested in the feature, but we didn't uh, understand the whole picture yet. <clears throat> I'm able over hot plug CPU with the live uh, session of the users increase the amount of CPU and memory. This is correct on version 1.0. Sorry, could, could, you, could you ask again? I, I didn't understand it. I'm able to change the amount of vCPU and uh, v, v, me, virtual memory for a uh, 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 You speak about hot load. Um, yes. Hot we, we... Go on. Um, I'm saying yes, that we recently introduced uh, a hot plug mechanism where you can add more CPU and memory. And uh, <clears throat> that uh, uh, basically involves a migration. So a virtual it's machine. Like a live ma migration to the same machine. Um, not the same machine. It will create a different uh, target pod with more memory and it will migrate uh, Migrate to that uh, larger pod and then update, <clears throat> um, update uh, Libert, um, uh, basically QMU with uh, with more memory, and you cannot do this with GPU because um, uh, I mean uh, GPUs are not migratable yet. <laughs> well, we are working on that for you know, um, <clears throat> but we are working with the Intel Flex. Uh, GPUs so far, and uh, I I I was I was asking also if there is someone supporting from Intel here on the group because I can talk with him. Is there someone from Intel in the Kubvert Kub uh, community? I don't think we have seen many, at least on not in the GPU space. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna bring my contacts to, to this uh, effort here <clears throat> also, because I have a, a large implementation of uh, Kubvert with Intel Flex GPUs, something around 15,000 bare metals for you know. Okay. Andre, have you been able to use uh, the device plugin from Intel with Qvert? Uh, I'm using one so far that is for the Red Hat and is working fine so far. Let me okay, but that's not from Intel, right? No, that's why I, I was thinking mm -hmm. there is someone from Red Hat doing that, not from Intel. Could be. Uh, it would be good uh, if we could have compatibility between uh, Qvert and Intel, but ne this needs to be something that Intel supports because they need yeah. to be compatible with uh, with Qvert. And I, as far as I know, that's not the case, but I might be wrong. So if you have contacts in Intel, that would be great. Uh, yes, I, I was thinking that there is someone. If it's not, I'm gonna push my contacts there to to they be here also. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Um, going to jump ahead. So the triage had no pull requests that needed attention, but I did see in chat. Someone has pointed out that um, there are a couple. Um, again, if you couldn't uh, edit this document, uh, you need to join our Google, 
Google group. The link is at the top of the page. Just by joining that, you'll have added access to this document and all the Qvert documents. So apparently these um, have been waiting for a while. That's a very low number. Uh, yeah, so the first one, that's about um, launching a container wrapped VM um, in Qvert. So one of our engineers were trying to do it. Um, with the current Qbert version, it was not possible apparently. So he uh, proposed this patch. The, uh, that's the first PR is about. Yeah, so this PR has been already approved, um, but hasn't been merged yet. It has been sitting for a while. So um, yeah, he asked me to uh, come to the meeting and talk about it and what are the possible... Um, Ways to merge it. I see. Yeah. Sorry, I think what's happened is um, uh, probably a formatting issue. It's um, do not merge release note label needed. It seems as though maybe uh, this is stuck up, um, which has prevented it from automatically merged, if I understand the process. So oh. I think fixing this, and we'll need to, um, if someone could drop the life cycle rotten, I don't know if that interferes with the. Um, with the PR being merged. Oh, got it. Yeah, I'll, I'll let him know. There is also the LGT I'm missing. Uh, Lubu, do you recall if there was any issue with this PR? It has been too long ago, I think. Uh, so is it just a formatting issue, if I'm right? It's, it's not. It's not. Uh, I think you are still missing the LGTM. Oh, OK. <laughs> so. What I recall is that uh, I wasn't comfortable to to LGTM it on because I just didn't know uh, some some assumptions that were made there. Uh, but let me have a look because it's it's been a year, so maybe I'm more smart now. And if not, maybe Vladi can have a look. It looks as though changes were requested that haven't been added to the PR. <clears throat> I'll take a look. I don't see it. Yeah, so the second PR, that's about uh, the VMI replica set. So we were told that um, this feature is deprecated and we were suggested to use VM pool. Uh, but um, uh, the VM pool is not uh, going to give that flexibility as VM replica set. And um, yeah, this in this, he was asking... Um, what was the reason why the VMA replica set has been deprecated? And you know, like, um, yeah. So that's the that's the question he posted it here. Uh, what flexibility is referred to with the replica set that would it be an advantage over VMA? Yeah. So it's uh, automatic rescheduling, and uh, he feels that we have to do a lot of manual management which we didn't have to do with the VMI replica set. Could you elaborate on the issue and we can have a look because like ultimately the pools should be, uh, should have a higher abstraction on top of uh, the replica set. Uh, I'm not sure I see a case which should not be covered by the pools. Itamar, yeah, you're and in the room? Yes, I am. Could you remind me what unimplemented features there was in terms of scheduling for VM pools? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh, I remember we had implemented it and that would, there were a couple of not yet implemented scheduling types and that may be what's being referred to here. Um, yeah, to be honest, I'm not that familiar with VM pools. Um, yeah, I, Apologies, I, I thought you'd implemented it. That's why I called you out. Sorry about that. I'll have to go check no, it out. No problems. I think that um, David Vossel is the one who implemented it, actually. Um, yeah. Right, and he's not here. OK, so. That's the point. Just to put some context, even if we deprecate this, we we can remove or we will commit to remove it only if we bump 
a major major version in Qbeard. Um, and that's not planned right now. So I think you are good for months or years, if not decades. Ah, okay. So I can still use the deprecated version. Uh, is my understanding correct? Yes, but what is our Luba, What is our commitment to to this code? I mean, <clears throat> do we, are we going to evolve this code even further if if needed? Or I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't be so confident in that area. I mean, it, it is like it is marked for deprecation. Um, I'm not sure actually if we marked it as uh, as deprecated officially. I know we we spoke about it. Uh, and I'm not sure we done the done the step. I would say let's see what the problems are with the you know in the comparison between VM pools. I mean VM pools are in our um, in the vision of where Kubernetes is going with the with these type of controllers. So I, I'm I'm curious what the problems are. Completely agree with that, Vladik. I would say if if VM pools is not meeting the the use case and replica sets are, then there's a deficiency we need to identify and fix. Is there an issue? Uh, oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> we're looking at it. Um, yeah. yeah, so he just wants um, the cluster to um, replicate um, the VMI. Mm -hmm. Um, instances whenever uh, one of the node is down. Um, so apparently uh, the VMI replica set was able to do that by automatic rescheduling. Um, so his point was VMI pool is not as flexible as the replica set and uh, he's a little concerned uh, why um, the former was uh, marked as deprecate, deprecated and he wanted to uh, get some thoughts on it. Got it. Okay, one thing to keep in mind is that um, things get a little dicey when you're talking about a node actually going down. Uh, we usually use node health checks to detect that. And if node health checks are properly being uh, utilized on a cluster, uh, Kubevert will become aware of that. It will reschedule a VM. Okay. So, so uh, my understanding is it doesn't have to do anything with the VMI pool or replica set. Hubert in itself um, does it already. Is it... It, yeah, it should. But the, the trouble here and that I suspect is going on is that Hubert's simply unaware that the node's in peril because we're not using health checks. Okay. Okay. So is there a way to use that health checks? Um, in our implementation, um, is there an API or, um, you know? It's uh, another controller. We'll have oh, to, okay. Yeah. Uh, under OpenShift, you'd use the API uh, would automatically enable node health checks. But if you're using pure Kubernetes, I, you're, you've left the sandbox. I don't know how to do that. I'll have to figure that out for you. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, we are quickly running out of time, so we'll uh, jump ahead to these. Uh, okay, so two PIs that need attention from folks. So see. Yeah, so I've raised uh, this one. This one is not mine, but it's... Uh, Adiz is looking for a, an approval from the storage team. And the other one is also his, uh, looking for an approval from um, a co approval. I see Mike Hendrickson on the call. Mike, can you please have a look at 12664 uh, on behalf of Six Storage? Sure. Thank you. Um, and a call pervert with regards to, oh, okay, so it's a vet. 
That's cute, so I can, uh, can someone volunteer to have a look at, oh, uh, Vladik is already tagged as a reviewer, Vladik on the call, so can you please have a look at 12667. My baby is just about to crack the shits. Um, got a couple of things for the bug scrub. Andrea, that was um, me writing that. Oh, okay, excellent. <laughs> so it's not actually a real bug, it's more like we don't support that use case. Oh, okay. Um, so it's I more this like overwriting, overwriting QME argument to make it work. But I have spoken also with some of my colleagues from virtualization team, it's like, pretty hard to get this working um, so i don't think qvr to officially support this so it's just some error to make it working okay okay um also uh, i think i think i did have this uh has an interesting uh, conversation with dosi bot and it looks as though dosi bot kind of goes off the rails a bit we don't have time to look at it but uh, if you're interested in having a look at that it is there um, we have a second bug. Um, thank you, Oliche. Um, what is this one? Did I add this? Oh, yeah. Uh, I added this because it's just going stale and an email about it. Um, so this was looking for someone from Six Storage. Uh, Mike, can you also have a look at this one? 11755. I previously turned Alexander. It looks as though I didn't get to it. Okay. Thank you. And just before we wrap up, um, I'll leave this here. I don't think we'll go into great thing, but three uh, flaky tests were fixed. Uh, hooray. Um, I think we have Lubo and Alex to thank for these, if I remember correctly. If I don't, um, well, I'm thanking you anyway. Uh, if I may chime in quickly, also Barack please. is uh, one of the authors. So yeah, oh. he has also uh, take, retaken in two of the uh, long-term flaky tests, which is a great work. Thanks. Amazing. Thank you, Barack, and thank you, Daniel. Um, so we will leave it there. Uh, we've almost run the of time. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us and for having a very lively discussion about uh, extremely important topics. It's really nice to have so many people in the community attend this and be able to just say, hey, here's a technology. Uh, this person is all about and for them to chime in. So thank you all for being here and for being part of this. Um, and we'll leave it there. Hope everyone has a lovely rest of the day, a great week, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ben. See you guys. Thank you. See you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.